Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Real Talk. I'm your host, Pat Brock, and we are here at the beautiful market on Madison. And of course, it's the farmer's market, and we've got the beautiful Elizabeth Coleman with us. How are you? Great. How are you? Doing well. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. You guys are up bright and early every Saturday, it seems. We see. are. Every morning, I'm here at 630 to start getting the farmer's market oh. rolled out and ready. <laughs> Lord have mercy. We're going to talk with Elizabeth about herself and the things that she does for, for downtown Dublin, and we're going to meet some of these vendors out here and see what kind of delicacies they have for us. Elizabeth, tell us all about you. Okay, so I was born and raised here in Dublin, mm -hmm. graduated from Trinity in 2011, um, went off to Georgia College and State University. Go Bobcats. Yes, <laughs> go Bobcats. And came back and, and am now the uh, program manager and theater director for the Downtown Development Authority. All right, very good. And so we see you have a desk set, a table set up out here. Tell us what you do out here to help make everything run smoothly. So um, we just have a general information booth mm -hmm. um, where people can come up if they need to know what kind of vendors we have or right. need any nutrition education mm -hmm. we also do that um, we also partner with wholesome wave Georgia who okay. works with farmers market so um, a lot of things that people don't know is that we do take EBT cards wow. um, yeah we take EBT cards and we double the amount up to $50 so we can ensure that those families are getting fresh food that's wonderful yes I did not know that yes. and I'm sure some of them did not know that <laughs> yes and so what about the Tell us about the hours and tell about the length of time that the farmer's market is in play. Okay, so it runs April through October mm -hmm. um, and of course there are different seasons for each um, crop so we'll yeah. always have some different kind of produce. Mm -hmm. um, but we also have craft vendors who okay. make handmade um, crafts or natural soaps and lotions. All and right. um, So we have a little bit of everything and it's from 7.30 to 12.30 every Saturday, every, April through October. Every Saturday, April to, through October. Now how do you become a vendor? Do you have a lot of them that are regular? regular vendors that have been with you for quite some yes, time? Yes, we have a lot of yeah. staple vendors yeah. who are really well known around here and have a great customer base, okay. which is great. Um, but if you are interested in being a vendor, we mm -hmm. do have an application that's online, or okay. you can come visit us here. We can give you an application and just turn that back in and we review it. And mm -hmm. if, you know, a lot of times it's accepted, of course, yes. unless we just have a lot of vendors in that. Right, that, in that same yeah. genre. Yeah. You know, I was thinking, what could I do to be a vendor? Uh, uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, this is what, okay, one day I got this notion. I mean, I grew up on a farm, you know, my dad, everything you can think of that you could eat, we grew it, right? Right. Or, you know, and so I went to the store and I got some different seeds. I was like, I told my husband, Marty, I want to have a garden. And he looked at me, he's like, okay. <laughs> And he said, you do know that's a lot of, lot of work. And so I'm thinking just like a four by six garden. Right. You've got people here with over 250 acres. Huge. Farms. Huge. Yes. And so it's not an easy task. No, it's a lot of work. And this is what they do. I mean, they, you know, this is, this market is how they get a lot of their money as well as, you know, other local sources. But they grow it and work the, oh. literally work the crops. <laughs> so. Well, we're about to meet some of these uh, men and women and kind of talk about what they do, how long they they've been doing it and so this is going to be an exciting day for us thank you for sharing with us thank you so much for coming all right this is elizabeth coleman program manager all right we're here at the farmers market and we're meeting some of the vendors here and they're talking all about themselves and of course the produce and the items that they have for us Miss mm -hmm. Robbie Graham, good morning. Good morning. Good to see you. Good to see you too. As good we're looking be behind, uh, she's got some beautiful fresh fruits and vegetables. Miss Robbie, you got to talk to us. I got to talk to you. <laughs> Tell us. Okay. Well, I'm Robbie Graham, and I am a, a farmer and has been a farmer practically all of my life. As a mm -hmm. matter of fact, I was um, literally born in the field, and I consider that to be my birthmark for loving oh, wow. to farm. And tell us so, where. Where were you born? I was born in Henry County, Alabama. In Alabama. Mm -hmm. You a Bama girl. All the way. And so you grew up on a farm. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of been in your blood then. Oh, definitely, definitely, definitely. Tell us about your farm and the things that you produce. Well, uh, we grow practically everything. <laughs> and we farm year-round. Mm -hmm. And um, we... Uh, Oh, Let me say this. So now you've got a big farm. Yeah, 285 acres. 285 acres. Look how mm -hmm. you just let that roll off your tongue. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what we're looking back here, I mean, are those purple hulls? Peas, yes. Yes. Just one of the kind that we grow. We uh -huh. grow about seven different kinds of peas. You've got, uh, I see, 
cabbage, cabbage onions, okra, mm -hmm. squash, butternut squash, butternut squash. Mm -hmm. peppers, I'm, green peppers. What you, you got? Zucchinis. Yes. Carrots. What else? And those are Corn. my better carrots. They're, they're uh, they are called colossal carrots. Uh huh. And my customers love those they're for huge. roasting. They're yeah, huge. they're huge and those very sweet. Those look like they're great for stews too. Oh, they're good for for chips. They're good for juicing mm -hmm. and you name it. They're you got good. sweet potatoes over here. Of course. Uh -huh. I, re I grew up on a farm, and mm -hmm. I remember having to shuck corn, and I said, oh, Lord, I complain the most out of everything. Did everybody. you ever put any in the stove and bake it? No, I did not. Well, I've been the, knowing the people that grill corn as well. Mm -hmm. Well, they grill corn, yes, but uh, and, uh, baking it was one of the first uh, recipes that really? I uh, got from my parents. Mm -hmm. Of course, it was always good as cream corn yes, from, yes. coming off the cart. Yes. But uh, I got many whoopings because <laughs> I went in the field and took it and just baked the whole oven. No, you did not. Oh, yes, I did. This is one of, my, one of my childhood memories. Like, we had a watermelon, you know, patch, and Daddy would hate for us to go out there and bust the watermelons out there. We and take the heart out yes! of it. <laughs> I would do that, mm -hmm. and that, like, to me was the best part. Oh, and yeah. And we would try to hide it, so we'd go throw it to the hogs, you know, to make sure they get rid of all of our oh, evidence. Oh, no, 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 no. He would find it. Pa <laughs> and, and parents back then was very good at doing very that. Very good at that. Mm -hmm. And so we, um, so you have a huge farm. You probably have a, such a rich family uh, legacy and a heritage that has been left behind in homegrown products. I'm a fifth-generation farmer. Fifth generation. Yes. Now, do you have children where you can pass this down to them? I have them, but they don't want to farm. Isn't that interesting, Miss Robin? Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> the, that's the time that we live in. Most of uh, our younger generation today don't want to farm, mm -hmm. but they don't know what they're missing. They don't know, and they don't know how fortunate they are to have a farm at that capacity. Because you know, growing up uh, with the farm, you take things for granted. You take things for granted about yeah. how expensive things really that's are. Right. If I, right. could, I could just go out to the garden and get some sweet potatoes. Of course, of <laughs> course. And, and anything you want. Anything. Anything you want. And the good part about it, you know what you're getting because you grew it yourself. That's right, and you know mm -hmm. what's being put in that product. That is correct. Well, thank you for sharing with us this morning. Y'all come down and see Miss Robbie Graham <laughs> and get some of this delicious vegetables. All right, we've got the beautiful Miss Shinholster with us. How are you this I'm morning? Great, Good great. to see you. Good to see you. Thank you. All right, we want to hear all about you. Okay. Your family and your business. Oh, well, we started this business. Actually, I got my husband to start building some furniture. Mm -hmm. And he said, I can't do this. I said, yeah. yes, you can. So anyway, we named our business. Our farm is called Big Woody, which mm -hmm. is Woody Woodpecker. Yes. And so that's where it came from. It's BWP, mm -hmm. which is Big Woody Productions. All right. And, and so tell us about what you make here. Well. Um, pretty much like cutting boards and, mm -hmm. and different kinds of tables, yep. and we do the potato sack, uh, framing out the old potato sacks. Oh uh, my God! That's kind of uh, antique yes. kind of stuff. So we love the the raw, the natural, yes. something that really speaks back of your wow, heritage and, and right. farming and and that kind of thing. Now, how long have you all been doing this? Uh, we have been actually started doing most of the building for the last five years, mm -hmm. but now we're getting close to retirement, oh so my we. God. Want to do it even more? There you go. And so this wood, this wood come from? We, your... well, we climbed, well, some of it did. We built yeah. our own bed out of a tree on our property. Oh my goodness! And so we have pictures of it over here yeah. that people can see. Uh, I don't know if they can afford it, but because <laughs> it takes a so long time. So something like that. So like your bed. What's the average cost of something like that? With all the work. All of the materials. Well, if you go to actually North Georgia and get one of them, it'll run you about three grand. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. So we're looking at twenty five hundred if you can get it on site and deliver it to so you. So you feel? I mean, it's like wow, your hands. Yes, y'all's hands are magic. <laughs> <laughs> and so when a person comes here to the farmers market, what will they see? look at this? So what is this right here? That's made out of cedar. It's like mm -hmm. a bread box or a card box yes. or anything you wanted. We have a great uh, butcher block which mm -hmm. is made out of a new wood. That my husband got it's called Ipe. Yes, it's Ipe a, wood. Yeah, it's a Brazilian hardwood, oh, like wow. a teak or something mm -hmm. that you would use. That's her husband in the background right there with the hat on. With the hat on. <laughs> and Woody Woodpecker, you see his shirt. I do see that. Yes. And so uh, coming out here, what made you decide to want to come out here to the farmers market? Um, because we just like the 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 hominess. Yeah. We liked sharing what we we build, what mm -hmm. we do, uh, and we just. 
we like people. There and, you go. And we just enjoy uh, sharing some of our creativity that yes. we have. And my husband loves taking stuff and putting it together in different mm -hmm. woods. So he's got tables that's yeah. got the different woods. We have a friend of ours that flips houses here in Dublin. Yeah. So we get a lot of reclaimed wood from that. Oh, that's awesome. So we're repurposing it and putting it back out. Well, there everything is. looks great. And thank, thank you. you for sharing with us Thank today. you so much. Ms. Shin Holster, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Dr. Manuel Vega uh, from Dublin Macon Cardiology. I've been in the same office in the campus of Fairview Park Hospital since 2004. I usually market myself as being uh, Lawrence County only cardiology group that's available uh, 24 hours, seven days a week. What it means is I live in town. I live probably five minutes from the hospital. This is different from some of the other cardiologists in the area, which mostly reside or live in Probably the closest place will be Macon, Georgia, which is about an hour away. On any given day, my office is open and a patient may come in and see myself or see my PA or my nurse practitioner and actually get an answer immediately than having to wait for weeks or, or days or waiting until that doctor has another rotation locally. The difference in having a local cardiologist, especially a person with all the credentials and all the boards, is that you get excellent care and you get it locally. I don't have a mission statement, but my statement is uh, go through life and touch people positively and make a difference in somebody else's life. And that's how I practice, and that's how I live. Zero percent financing and we'll just add it to your bill. Start saving today. It only makes sense. The City of Dublin Natural Gas. All right, we've got Miss Mary Thrift with us. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Great. Always good to see you. Thank you. I'm thinking I first met you at the Chris Kendall Mart. Yes, you did. <laughs> Isn't that a lovely market, though? It really is. I loved how they did everything. Yes, ma'am. And what I remember about you was this uh, the soap that I purchased that was so wonderful. Oh, creamy. Yes, ma'am. And creamy. I have to have some more today, too. Very good. So, now, yes, listen, we want them to know about you and, okay. uh, and tell us about how you started what you do. Um, I began what I'm doing now after I retired from the American Red Cross mm -hmm. and I was just sitting at home thinking what do I want to do now mm. and I call it a God whisper and that's how I began all this. Yeah. Yeah. And so you make this? I make everything myself. Everything that you see here is by my design. From the packaging to the labeling, everything is, is all me. So this is like a, a Nurture Spa Naturals yes, fruits and flowers. So that's cucumber, melon, cucumber, melon chamomile, chamomile blend. Melon. That's goat's yes, milk lotion. It is. Now, did you have to go to school to learn how to do all of this, Mary? No, no. I just taught myself how to do it as I went along. This is my third year, mm -hmm. and it's just getting better and better and better. And what are some of the uh, other products that you have? I've got goat's milk soaps. I've got uh, all natural lip balms. Mm -hmm. I've got my uh, scrubs in two yes. cents, um, peppermint eucalyptus and cucumber melon. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. What else have I got back here? Insect repellent. Really? Uh, third That's year. a big thing, especially here in Georgia. Yes, ma'am. It's the third year I've been making it, and I've had no complaints about it. People are coming back for resales, mm -hmm. and it's just a fabulous product. That is so wonderful. How yes, could so you guys got to come here? You've got to see yeah. Mary. I mean, she's got some great products. She'll do some demonstrations on you. Mm -hmm. What was that you tried on me last week? Was it lotions? No, it was no. something to help me. I needed something to help me kind of relax, and you rubbed it right across my arm. Oh, the roller bottles. The roller bottle, yes, that's what it is. Yes, ma'am. That's a great little product. All right. Yes, well, thank you for sharing with us. Thank you. This is the beautiful Mary Thrift, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. All right. We've got Miss Sonia Harrington with us. Hi, Sonia. Hey. We want to know about you, and we want to know about what you're doing out here at the farmer's market. I do something really, really neat. I'm excited about what I do. I take people's clothes mm -hmm. and I make memory things out of them. Wow. Some, some things are quilts, some things there's bears. I've done frogs, dogs, ladybugs, yeah. rabbits. That's amazing. Now, pill how did you start this, Sonia? Uh, several years ago, I'd, I've been quilting. 
for probably 28 to 30 years. Mm -hmm. But the, the memory part of it, I started in 2010 mm -hmm. after I lost both of my grandparents. Oh, wow. I wanted something that that me and my brother could have to remember them by. And then after I had something for us, I thought, well, yeah. I need something for our kids. Yeah. So they've all got bears. That's too sweet. And it's just grown from there. And you know, and these are these make great gifts. We had a gift made for my sister. We took all of her old t-shirts and, and had a beautiful quilt made for her for her retirement. And so when I came by your booth and saw all of your cool items. I knew that we had to stop to see her. All right, and so tell us what's the name of your business and how can they reach you? The name of my business is Sonia Stitches. Um, I have a Facebook page and it's listed as Sonia Stitches or I have a Facebook page and it's listed under my name, Son okay. Sonia so, Harrington. So if you've got some old items that you kind of want to be uh, memorialized, so yes. to speak, this is the woman to come see down here at the farmer's market. Right. So we're so pleased with all the great work that you do. Now, do you make clothes too or are you just strictly quilting? Just, just the, the fun animals and yeah. the quilts. Who taught you how to do all of this? just kind of learned on my own. Look at you, woman. Self-taught <laughs> quilter. Thank you for sharing with us. All right, we've got one of those staples here at the Farmer's Market, Miss Lisa Wright. How are you? I'm doing fine. How are you today? Doing very well. We want to know about what you've got out here or All your right. business. All right, I have gluten-free and sugar-free desserts. Mm -hmm. I do the regular and the uh, gluten-free. I do ve vegan. Mm -hmm. I do any of them but I only have on hand all the time are the gluten-free or sugar-free. And what, tell us about why um, those are the type of desserts that you make. It's because I have a grandson who is gluten intolerant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have family relatives who are, have the different eating disorders and you can find sugar stuff everywhere. Everywhere. But you can't find things for people who don't eat gluten. Right. And sometimes and it takes you, a minute to diagnose about the gluten right, allergies. Right, right. And then even the sugar. A lot of diabetics say, oh, I'd rather eat the uh, sugar. Yeah. I just take me another shot or something. And technically, that's not good for you. Right. Because medicine is, is good when it helps. Right. But when you're using it so you can eat anything, that's not a that's good not thing. That's not a good thing. And so tell us about some of the products that you have out here this morning. I have kale bars, which most people don't know anything about. No, they don't. <laughs> and kale bars is more like a breakfast cereal. Mm -hmm. It's a breakfast bar. It's got oatmeal, raisins, and or craisins, mm -hmm. kale, and the, the regular bread. Right. Okay, and you can eat it for breakfast, and you've got your fruit. Mm -hmm. You've got your vegetables. Yes. You've got your uh, fiber. Mm -hmm. you, you've done it. You've got everything. Very good. So you've and, got kale bars. And I have gingerbread. Mm -hmm. Gingerbread is medicinal. Mm -hmm. Medicinal means that it helps you with some of your dietary needs. Right, right. Okay, it does good for headaches. It wow. does good for stomach problems. Mm -hmm. So that's your ginger. So then you I go ahead. You go ahead. Okay, and then I have carrot cake and yep. banana bread. Mm -hmm. Those are vegetable and fruit. My twist, Lisa's goodies with a twist, means fruit, vegetable, or medicinal. Look at you. You like a little okay. medicine woman over and here. And then I have can <laughs> then I have canned goods. Uh-huh. And my canned goods are pickled peaches, mm -hmm. which is an old country staple. Mm -hmm. And I knew nothing about it. My nose turned up over my head <laughs> when somebody asked me what? about making pickled peaches. Right, right. And I said, "Okay, I'll make you some." And it took me a year to taste them. And here it is, you're selling them. And I'm selling them and I, and I do make them sugar and sugar free because again, you can buy sugar stuff everywhere. Everywhere. But you can't buy the sugar-free. You sugar can't buy free. Lisa's goodies, goodies with, a, with twist a twist anywhere. anywhere. That's right, it. Unless you come down here to the farmer's market. That's it. All right. Very good. Good to see you, Miss Lisa. And nice seeing you again, All too. All right. Farmer's market, ladies and gentlemen. Lisa's Lisa. goodies with a twist. Lisa's goodies with a twist. twist. <laughs> Thank <Thanks>. you. <laughs> We're out here at the farmer's market, and we've got a mother and daughter duo with us. They're going to introduce themselves, and we're going to talk about the products they have here at the farmer's market and some wonderful goodies. All right. <sighs> Youngest to the oldest. <laughs> <laughs> tell us who you are and tell us about your business. My name is Cherry Bowen, and my business is Cherry Sprinkles. And I do all types of bath products. I do um, homemade sugar scrubs mm -hmm. that use coconut and sunflower oils. I also do some whipped creams, um, some strawberry pedicure products, um, and 
I'm trying to think what all I do. Now, I do a lot of different bath now, products. Now, Cherry, how long have you been doing this? Um, I've been doing it a couple of years, but mm -hmm. I just started um, back in December mm -hmm. of last year. And how did marketing. you how did you get into this? Well, I had done some um, sugar scrubs for people for gifts and things mm -hmm. for the holidays, yep. and they really liked them, and so they recommended that I try to start you know selling yeah. my own products and, and so here you are out here I at just, the market right and i just keep <laughs> developing more products so and that's a good thing so you're very creative yes ma'am so she must get it from her mama <laughs> <laughs> this white-haired beauty right here how are you mama i'm doing great great all right talk to us okay okay i am elizabeth hadway and i do liz's sinful delights and they are delightful <laughs> I do about 25 different things. Mm -hmm. uh, I do things from my great-great-grandmother. Wow. I do things from my mother. Mm -hmm. I do things original from me. And I'm good at just mastering, putting things together that taste good. <laughs> and this is from generation to generation. From generation to generation. Now, what have you taught her? It's going to end with me. Oh, Lord have mercy. The dynasty is over. The dynasty is over. She's gone from sinful delights to she's scrubbing. <laughs> but, Mom, it's like, so this has gone family to family, just different generations. It has. Do you it remember has. when you were a little girl and uh, your mom doing things like this? She did, and she would put me right there. Right there. And let me see everything. She'd have me chopping, yep. <laughs> learning, mm -hmm. learning. And tell us about some of these. Well, this one is my hot salsa. Ooh, look at that. Has every kind of hot pepper that I can get my hands oh, on. Oh my Lord. And I just start dumping. Right. <laughs> I just start dumping <laughs> till it gets as hot as I want it. Okay. And this one is from my great great grandmother, which is a cabbage and onion relish. Very popular. Mm -hmm. Just started making it. Right. And everybody loves it. And what do they put uh, this on? Well, they tell me it's delicious on mm -hmm. hot dogs, sausage dogs, mm -hmm. black eyed peas, what? butter beans. What? It is delicious. <laughs> my favorite is to put it on my black eyed, Your peas, black -eyed peas and have my thin fried cornbread. <laughs> I'm telling you, you're oh in heaven. You're, you're in, in heaven. heaven. That's why it's sinful. Uh, it <laughs> is. Not fattening. Not fattening. Though. Not fattening. No not fattening. fattening. No now, fattening. how long does it take you to do something like this? Uh, well, this one, it takes about five hours. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of labor. Lots. A lot of time. A lot, a lot of chopping. Yeah. Lots of different vegetables go into it. Did you try to get Cherry in there to chop some vegetables? I often tell her, I would like to put you down with a whole bushel and see you do it all by yourself. It looks like she's making her own path, Mama. And she says, no way. No way, way Jose. <laughs> she always tells me the trash can is too close. Oh, Lord. <laughs> And you know, Cherry, as you, you know, the work that you all do with your hands and the things that it seems as though you love doing what you do. So would you say that this is done out of love? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. And we, we hope that everybody that buys our products enjoy them and will come back and be a return customer. That's right. That's right. Where are y'all from originally? Tennell. Tennell, Georgia. The big city. The big city of Tennell. And if you've never been there, you'll call it Tennell. <laughs> if you go over the overpass, you'll miss it completely. <laughs> you'll miss it completely. Well, we love your products. Thank you for sharing with us Thank this morning. You. Thank, you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Every morning, you're up at dawn to take care of the land you love. So are we. That's why Kubota dealers are the best at understanding what you need and sending you home with the perfect machine for the job. We know more than equipment. We know you. Freeman's Lawn and Garden. Call us at 272-2198. 
It's easy to score a great deal at Dublin Nissan. The Sentra S is as low as $14,485. Call, click, or come see us. Dublin Nissan, the only dealer you will ever need. All right, we've got this Deidre Postel with us, and she's going to talk to us about her section here at the Farmer's Market. How are you? Good, how are you? Doing good. Good to good. see you. Thank you. Of course, her 14-year-old daughter, who's her assistant, <laughs> she's behind the camera. She's directing the whole thing. All right, Deidre, <laughs> talk to us. Okay, a um, little bit. Uh, we're solely on bath and body indulgence. Uh, we have soaps and bath bombs and other different bath products. Um, let's see, where can I go? How long well, have you been doing this? Tell us about that. This, let's see, this is our, actually our second year at the farmer's market, but mm -hmm. we've been doing this for three years now. Yeah. Um, we absolutely love it. Yeah. You know, it's, it, it's beyond cool when you can do something yourself, but to, to make, <laughs> right, but to make these kind of products, you know, mm -hmm. everybody's used to going out to the stores and buying soaps and things mm -hmm. like that, but ours are totally different. Tell us about that difference. The difference, well, main thing is that you can pronounce everything in soap, every ingredient. Yeah. Um, you know, it's no canola. fates. No fates, you know? <laughs> no, there, you, and there's, yeah. it's, it's, it's very simple. Canola mm -hmm. oil, cocoa butter, mm -hmm. olive oil, all the things that we can put into our bodies that are right. good for our bodies, mm -hmm. also going into our skin, which yes. is really important. And honestly, there are countless vitamins, mm -hmm. minerals, antioxidants. Right. Um, fatty acids, there's yes. so much, I, I can't even remember them all. And so the benefits of someone using these products? Benefits, besides the vitamins and minerals. Yes. Skin glowing <laughs> like this, even yes. in the heat, right? Yes, <laughs> honestly, you can use our soaps and you can probably go about half the day without even having to put on lotion. That's just how do you this see how I'm looking at you? Like, yeah, that's you just serious? how much the moisturizing is <laughs> That is there. wonderful, and our skin yes. needs that type moisture. Yeah, especially out in the sun, you know, yep. people that work long hours out in the sun mm -hmm. and just being exposed to elements mm -hmm. they really need that all right and, and the name of your your business this is soliano's bath and body indulgence check soliano's it, yes check right, us out can, on facebook how can they reach you on facebook is on it, fa Soli, just put in soliano's we pop spell right spell that for them s-o-u-l-i-a-n-o-s <laughs> and where'd the name come from it's actually a combination of my three com three favorite kinds of food because yep. I was going to open a restaurant, mm -hmm. but God spoke to me. So All right, so here one's got to be soul food. Yes. The other? Um, Asian and Italian. <laughs> This woman is just a plethora of a mixture of all things. All yes. right, well, thank you for sharing with thank us, you. Deirdre. Thank you. Deirdre grateful. Postel, ladies and gentlemen, Soliano's. All right, we've got Mr. Greg Jordan with us of Jordan Farms here at the Farmer's Market. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. All right, we want to hear about you guys and tell us about your farm. Give well, us a little history on it. I'm Greg from Johnson County, and um, I sell products. I got catfish, fresh catfish. Mm -hmm. I've got some strawberry jam. Got some sweet pickles, some of the best sweet pickle in the world, I think, wow. what people tell me. But I got into this because my daughter, Kaylee, is huge in the 4-H. Mm -hmm. She needed money for her little projects that she had every week. So what better way than come to the farmer's market and we earn money doing it. That's wonderful. And it's been real good. All right. Now, how long has your family's farm been in your family? It's 100 years, I would imagine. 100 years. Yep. My daddy passed away probably three years ago mm -hmm. and inherited it and we just have cows and just general farm stuff mm -hmm. out there. How many acres do you have? It's probably 400. Wow. So, to, and it helps, it just helps pays the bills and mm -hmm. the great people that come through, we have a good time. I love the vendors, love the people and you just develop a relationship with people. I was gonna say, you all seem like you're a farmer's market family. <laughs> we are, we are a family. All right. And so you got catfish, like actual catfish. Actual you clean, cleaned them already? Clean, fresh catfish. They're generally clean Thursday and Friday, mm -hmm. and they're ready for sale f Saturday. All right. So and, this and is the place to come for those fresh catfish. Four dollars a pound. And this canned, uh, the canned items. The canned items right here. That's we make we make these. We get the strawberries from Phillips Farms, strawberry farm up in Buckeye mm -hmm. when they're in season, right. or we go to Sunny Sunny Day Farms over in Louisville. And you all make this yourself? We make it ourselves. I have my wife and my daughter Kaylee. They help a lot too. I was going to ask you if Kaylee's helping out. She's Kaylee learning a, a lot with 4 H. Kaylee so. is a huge help. <laughs> I depend on her a lot. That's awesome. Well, yep. thank you so much for being out here. Fresh catfish, canned.
pecan jam. And wait a minute, let's look at this one. Sweet pickles. And y'all come see me. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Jordan. Thank you. You will get all kinds of business owners out here at the farmer's market. Logan Beggood, a 14-year-old. How are you, Logan? I'm good. How are you? Doing very well. Tell us the name of your business and some of the things that you do. Uh, Logan's Homestead. We uh, bake bread, cakes, jellies. We have some peas here. Now, Logan, you baked that bread. I did. How did you learn how to bake homemade bread? Well, I've watched some YouTube videos. and Look at that. Just read the recipe and and so you just said so you just said hmm I think I want to do something I think I want to start my own business that's right and so have you always like worked with your hands and on your farm and things like that so who do you get this from you think probably my mama your mama probably. who's in the background right, right there and so you all have what all do you have on your farm we have chickens ducks guineas turkeys pheasants uh, garden you know you know that's a lot of work to, to manage a farm right how many hours a day do you have to spend out there several several um, hours several. and where do you go to school I'm homeschooled you're homeschooled all right and so you're baking breads you're also what kind of peas are those these are uh, purple holes and cream 40s those look delicious and how yeah. long have you had your business a couple years a couple of years and so how's it been for you coming out here to the farmers market it's been good you know when people look at you Logan they're like wait a minute you're 14 years old, right. and you're already an entrepreneur. Right. All right, what do you love about doing this? I just love it all, making the bread, picking the peas. <laughs> I love it all. So you all come out here and see Logan Bedgood, a 14-year-old business owner. And what's the name of it again? Logan's Homestead. Logan's Homestead, and he learned a lot of it from YouTube. Thanks, Logan. Good to see you. All right.